Hey dudes, my name is Riertz and this is my review of the DJI Mavic Air. I still believe that this is the perfect drone and in this video I'll explain why. I have been a big fan of DJI and its products since I got my very first Phantom 3 drone. And yes, this is definitely gonna be a biased review. Just so you know, I had the DJI Phantom Advanced 3 drone, I have the Osmo Mobile 2, and now I have this Mavic Air drone. And if I could afford it, I would just buy everything from DJI. It's been over a year since DJI released this beautiful drone, and YouTube is full of great tech reviews about it. But in order for me to afford it, I had to wait some time until the prices drop. In the box, this drone came with a remote control and also this beautiful little case that it comes with it's very elegant and they didn't waste any space just to keep the case as small as possible as well so it doesn't take a lot of space it actually looks more expensive and you can definitely see that this is made by DJI and they've even tried with the case then we also have a battery charger and a USB-C cable and the battery charger has two USB ports so that you can both charge your remote and also anything else for maybe for example your phone at the same time which is really convenient then it also came with three little cables for the remote and we have micro usb we have a lightning cable for iphone users and a type c cable so it doesn't matter what kind of phone you have you can connect all your phones with the remote which is very thoughtful i would say of course we also have these little joystick replacements in case you lose them we also had extra propeller blades in case you lose them, but I lost mine already. And for some reason they also included propeller guards. Mavic Air is a 3-axis gimbal drone with a 4K camera and it takes steady, beautiful aerial shots and because of the size and the lightweight, you could actually use it for cinematic handheld shots as well. With the 4K camera, the videos are smooth and beautiful even if you live in a city as boring as Glasgow. It also has a possibility to take 12 megapixel photos, which is, you know, it's okay, it's alright, it's 12 megapixel photos. We've had 12 megapixel photo cameras in our phones since 2015. Not a big deal, but it's enough, probably. There are 8 gigabytes of memory built into this drone, in case you forgot to take your memory card with you, and we've all done that before. 8 gigabytes might not be a lot, but it's definitely enough just for emergency situations. It has three-dimensional environment sensors built in, which basically senses how close or far objects are. There's once at the bottom, once at the back end, once at the front. So when the drone is flying, it detects how close the object is and to avoid it, it flies around it. I personally have not yet tested that just because I don't trust it and I'm afraid that if it doesn't work, it, my drone will crash and I can't even afford that. The propeller arms fold in and fold out and it makes it even more compact than before and I believe that a lot of people wish that the Spark drone could have done that. But now we have this one. The only thing is when you're opening the arms, if you're not used to it or you don't use it for a while, you forget which way the arms come out and then once you figure it out, you kind of feel like you're breaking them. And you can also unfold or fold these landing arms or landing legs just for a safer landing. Then we also have the remote. It looks pretty much the same as rest of the Mavic series remotes. The only thing, this one does not have a screen up here. Very flexible. It can fit small phones and larger phones as well, like mine. And we have the return to home. We have the sports functions on and off and camera and shooting modes and the antennas fold in easily as well so a great remote i would say then also you can unscrew these little joysticks and put them in these little safe places in here which i personally don't use just because i'm too lazy and the remote seems well built enough to just throw it in and it will be Fine. Although DJI advertises that you could definitely fly this drone in heavy winds, I would not suggest that. I've tried it and just because of the lightweight and the size of it, 
it can be blown away easily if the winds are too strong or especially if you're flying very high with it. What I'm trying to say is fly high at your own risk. I also love the fact that all the videos I take get straight uploaded to my Google Pixel and my Google Photos so I can get to editing straight away without even taking the SD card out of it. So is this drone perfect? Well, there are some things that kind of annoy me. The very first thing is that the SD card is hidden in this tiny slot and it's really hard to kind of get it in and out but if you practice enough you can try to get it out but kind of annoying but I guess just because of the size of the drone they have to compromise some spaces which is fine. The second part is that uh, this gimbal protector, once, you, once it comes off, it's really hard to put it back on or at least annoying to put it back on because this part is always hitting the camera so you want to be really careful about it but then I guess I've learned to straighten the gimbal out with my hand first and then try to put it in but yeah, you don't really want to hit the gimbal just because it seems very fragile and you don't want to move it around. So you want to use the protector, but it's hard to put on, especially if you're in a hurry. But then again, I remember I had the same problem with the Phantom 3 Advanced Gimbal Protector. It was also really plasticky and kind of annoying to put on, but you also want to put it on, not to break the gimbal. So that's one of those things I don't know if you can possibly fix. The last thing is if your drone is folded up already, it's probably in your backpack or something and you just quickly want to charge it, you can't take the battery out if it's folded up. So you have to unfold all four, all four arms and after that you can take the battery out and then put it on the charger, which you kind of wish you could just charge it straight from the drone, from the USB cable or something, but that's not an option, so kind of inconvenient. So, the overall conclusion. The main reason why I wanted this drone specifically is how small it is. The best part about it is that DJI managed to make it so small, but make it feel so professional. This is a beautifully made drone. You can definitely see that this was made by DJI just by looking at it. For the size of it, DJI managed to put in so many things, make it so powerful that unless you're making a full feature film, you will never need any other drone than this one. The Mavic Pro series are a bit more bulkier, a bit bigger, and the Spark drone is a bit smaller, but it also feels and looks like a toy. So that this Mavic Air hits the perfect middle ground. For the price of this drone, you could not find a better, more professional, better built, and a smaller drone than this one. So, would I recommend spending 600 bucks on this little toy? Absolutely fucking yes, best money ever spent. Because of the size and the quality of this drone, it is going to take several years until someone, most probably DJI, will make a better, smaller and more powerful drone than this. And even when they do, this baby will still put up a great fight and you most probably won't need to upgrade for about next 10 years. So yes, if you're interested in buying a drone, this definitely is the right choice and you will not regret it. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section. and. If if you're already an owner of this drone, share your thoughts about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it was any useful, leave a like. And if you want to see any more of tech videos that I've made, I'll leave a playlist right there. And if you want me to make more videos, you can subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!